Hello, everyone, and welcome to another edition of the NFL Draft Triple Take, brought to you by UPMC. Mike Pursuta, Dale Lawley, and Matt Williamson. We're here once again to get you ready for the NFL Draft, which is scheduled to take place April 27th through the 29th in Kansas City. We are in the uh, part of the process where we are taking a second look at the individual position groups, and today we're going to take another look at the inside linebackers. Off the ball, if you will. Off the mm -hmm. ball. When did that start being a thing? I don't by the know. Way? Well, when they started calling outside linebackers edges. Yeah. I think that you had to kind of designate between the two. Wonder Maybe. what they'll call these guys five years from now. <laughs> anyway, they're the guys that stand, you know, just off the line of scrimmage in the middle of the they defense. Back, they the back line. the line. And uh, yeah, they're <laughs> right. supposed to be able to stop the run and cover when <laughs> asked to. And uh, I don't know about you, as defense has become more specialized, these guys, Dale, are becoming more significant to me because. If you have a guy that can do both, stuff the run and cover at least to a, an acceptable degree, you don't get caught. And with, rush the passer as well at times. But you don't get caught with the wrong guys on the field. Correct. Whereas Absolutely. when you're playing mix, mix and match and pl trying to play that chess game with the offense all the time, there are, there are snaps where you're going to lose if you're not uh, adequately supplied with these dual threat type of players. There's no doubt about that. And, and that's why I look at this group here. Uh, you get a lot of guys that can do a lot of different things. Um, not a deep position this year. Some of these guys, uh, such as a Nolan Smith, uh, such as a Nick Herbig, were outside linebackers in college who, who you know, rushed the passer a little bit. Uh, but they've been, you know, you, you can play these guys off the ball. And speaking of that, I've got now got Nick Herbig from Wisconsin uh, as my number five inside backer. I'm shifting him inside. He's a little lighter. He's also the brother of uh, Nate Herbig, who uh, says he's a stud. So there you go. I'll take his word for it on that one. At number four, I've got this guy uh, is a converted uh, tight end slash wide receiver. Um, just makes plays on the football. Uh, he's a pure coverage backer, uh, really good in coverage. Um, maybe not as, as big as some of these other guys, but certainly a good football player. At uh, three, I'm going with Trenton Simpson out of Clemson. Um, really fast, big linebacker. The instincts could be a little bit better. I think that's something that will get better as he works on this. I don't have that problem with Jack Campbell, my number two guy. Doesn't have to be bigger. He doesn't <laughs> no. have to be he's, He doesn't have to be bigger, and his instincts are great. He reads everything well. And the final guy here is Arkansas's uh, Drew Sanders, uh, was an outside linebacker and an edge rusher at Alabama. They bump him back inside this year. He still goes and gets nine and a half sacks, makes plays on the football. Just a foot, you can tell. This guy was a, a quarterback in high school. His dad was a, a football coach. You can see that when Translate, you watch the film. Yeah. Think about that for a minute. This guy was at Alabama. Yeah. Transfers to Arkansas, and he's number one on your board. How about that, right? Uh, I, the, he's and, that good, and too. And basically makes a position yeah. change in the process. Well, it tells right, you a little crazy. something about Alabama and, right. and how well I'll, just in case you didn't know, Alabama. <laughs> pretty good. good players, yeah. Uh, I've also got Sanders at number one in my uh, further review of this position. Trenton Simpson is my number two and then uh, number three uh nolan smith of georgia was not an inside linebacker the first time we went through these i had him as an edge guy i've got him as an inside guy now and again you got to look at the statistics he he missed some time with injury but even the games he played he did not dominate statistically we're at the point of georgia's development as a behemoth that you do not in my opinion at least judge georgia guys on stats because oh, right. they're, they're too spread out. that You have to watch him play and project. And uh, I think once he gets healthy, he is going to be pretty good. Uh, Henley, I have in my best of the rest pile. Uh, Jack Campbell from Iowa is my number four. You're bumping all, the Big Ten guy. And also uh, <laughs> bumping another one. In another one. Bumping there two Big Ten Again, guys. he's on the, you know, just missed the just top missed. five part. But uh, Roll Tide checks in at number five. And uh, I don't think I have to say anything more. He placed linebacker for Alabama, went to Tennessee initially, went to Bama, and uh, everything I've heard in uh, some of the draft analysts nationally talking about Henry Tao Tao. Well done. I've been avoiding that one. <laughs> Took a shot. Yeah. <laughs> uh, regarded in uh, Tuscaloosa as one of the smarter players Absolutely. and uh, intuitive players that they've had down there. And again, they got a lot of guys. They've had a few. Yeah, a little bit smaller, makes a ton of plays. Um, he did not make my top five, but was a just missed for sure. Um, a lot of the same names. What I did was I put Smith at one, 
And I'll be honest. I mean, if, if I kind of cheated. I mean, is he a linebacker? Is he an edge? I I'm put not him, arguing. I put him with the linebackers because I think this group is a lot weaker than the edges, and I want to spend a lot of time with them. I mean, he's a, a team captain type, super versatile, extreme athlete, playmaker. Like you said, I mean, sometimes they're winning the second half by 50, and he's not even in the game. It's hard to put up stats that way. Or you see him on the sidelines during the two playoff games. It's just went out for coin tosses and right totally engaged totally engaged I, mean, I just think he's a really good front seven player somewhere and i wanted to you know highlight him sanders is kind of similar as we mentioned i mean he was an edge at bama not that he was bad doing it and then he goes off the ball at arkansas and does a little bit of both and does them both really really well you know dale mentioned his background and you see that on the field for sure same with campbell i mean campbell makes a ton of plays big 10 guy dale. big, big 10, 10 guy, guy. i yeah. mean he's over six four his change of direction stuff at the combine was extremely had him on the basketball good. Basketball team at Iowa this year. Yeah, I mean, I think he won the Butkus Award for best linebacker in the country. So super productive, better athlete than I guessed. And you know, a couple of years ago, an old school between the tackle thumper, I think would go really high. But he's not a liability in coverage either. Simpson's kind of the opposite, where safety turned linebacker athlete work in progress in terms of reading plays and all those things can be an, an overhang defender is not as much as just a stack linebacker but so much potential also on a really good defense yeah dad was an army ranger so you know, yeah you have to right some discipline there yeah. real high character guy and then Whoa. i had henley at five as well and a lot of these dudes you know we'll talk about that aren't on the list are Little undersized, run and hit. I mean, that's the way the, the college is going. That's the way the league's going. Something but he has that, long arms. A lot arms. that you like, but something that makes you pause. Yeah, no doubt, no doubt. I mean, you opened this was talking about, you know, the, the, just the position as a whole. These guys get manipulated by offensive coordinators to no end. I mean, they have a much harder transition early in their careers. And you'll see a lot of teams missing on these guys because they're drafting athletes, whether, you know, more so than – processors and you know read and react type players so that's something to worry about with these guys a lot of them don't come in the league and make a big splash and i don't think this is a great group overall anybody uh beyond these five that uh caught your attention uh pace from cincinnati is an interesting guy he's yeah. another one of these 220 pound run and hit but he rushes the passer really well super aggressive you know really stands out on tape uh this position to me wasn't as deep as the other stuff yeah, if you look at Pace, he had a six-sack game when he was at Miami of Ohio <laughs> as an inside linebacker. Uh, then he transferred to Cincinnati last year, 137 tackles, uh, 10 sacks, three forced fumbles. Just makes plays all over the place. Think he changed apartments? He may have, yeah. <laughs> Wouldn't have had to. <laughs> Wouldn't have had to from Miami of Ohio to not Cincinnati? Not that far, no. It's not that far. You're, you're, you're true, true. Uh, how about the, the Marvin Overshawn? He's another one of those uh, undersized guys, but nine sacks. Three interceptions, 20 pass defenses in his college career. I mean, this guy gets his hands on the football. A couple guys I wanted to mention in my, uh, you know, also others receiving votes category if we're talking AP Top 25. And these are down the line guys a little bit. Of course, we've got Herbig. Um, you know, his brother is now uh, with the Steelers. Mm -hmm. And he, uh, if you think back, uh, Kansas City drafted uh, a rather nondescript linebacker out of Wisconsin last year, Leo Chanel. Mm -hmm. And he ended up playing all year and playing in the playoffs and really helping solidify that team. Uh, Shaka Hayward, is, is the name familiar from Duke? Well, it should be because <laughs> Cousin Cam and Cousin Connor are playing here with the Pittsburgh Steelers. And uh, the last guy I wanted to mention, uh, I wanted to really tap into Matt's knowledge being the former scout of the group. Uh, ben Van Summeren from Michigan State. Now, he had, did not get invited to the, to the combine. Had a ridiculously crazy workout. 4'4", 42.5-inch vert, 10'11 uh, on the broad jump, 29 reps at 225. But what really impressed me about this kid, and this is coming from the heart, <laughs> he started at Michigan and went to Michigan State. So, Matt, when you see that kind of transition, do you give this kid full marks for realizing the gravity of his mistake <laughs> and correcting it? Well, I think with a guy like that, you see the ridiculous workout numbers. He didn't go to the combine. So you, 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 you want to bring him in for a visit, make sure his head's screwed on straight. Yeah, and you well. wonder why he didn't go to transfer to Alabama instead of Michigan State. That's the other. Well, no, he found, he found the right place. I think, you know, special teams at least, right? Guy that smart and that physical has got to be a place for him. Uh, that's going to do it for our uh, second look at the off-the-wall linebackers. Uh, thanks for finding us, however and wherever you did. And uh, this is the part of the 
festivities where I remind everybody that uh, keep checking those Steelers social media platforms because we are continuing to churn out uh, this type of content. We're almost through our second look at all the positions. We've got another mock draft in store for you down the road. A couple of those, actually. Mm -hmm. And uh, if that's not enough in advance of uh, the NFL draft, April 27th to 29th in Kansas City, can't help you. Uh, for Dale Lawley and for Matt Williamson, I'm Mike Pursuta. Thanks for watching. This has been the NFL Draft Triple Take brought to you by UPMC.